And good morning, everybody. Welcome back. Uh, my name is David Cross, and I've got a, a couple updates today. Another project that I started last night uh, to access the uh, PowerShell APIs. You know, again, using the module that I'm working to effectively go out and connect to the executives, import the containers, and then using um, kind of the ability to navigate through the containers and express, uh, export the different blocks to show the size and then get some utilization numbers and some other things. So all that in a couple hours last night using the PowerShell Studio, which turned out to, uh, again, work really well. So one of the templates they provided was this um, container, which is a tree view and then a list view type function. So I built in a tab control for the blocks, the devices, and then I'm going to work on some other things for the container policies. And effectively what you enable to do here is select your IP control executive, either uh, click the load containers, which will then go out and load the containers from that site, putting them into their correct order. And then as you click through these by enabling the auto export blocks checkbox, as you click through each container, you get an aggregate list, the free block space. And ultimately, as we get down into the sites, you should see your deployed subnets. Uh, kind of here at this point, I've set up, go out to grab the utilization using the uh, get block subnet utilization. There's an API to do that. And I'm building that in for each subnet here so that we can see what the available addresses are. I'll probably end up doing you know, something in a, a column that we can then flag, put some coloring around this so that we can alert on it, things like that. Also, where you have uh, deploy blocks, I had set it up so that I could go out and right click to simply you know, load the containers. So again, doing what the button does there. But then also, as you get into the sites where there are deployed subnets, to quickly get the exports by the container. So now pulling all of the IP addresses by the container, by all of its types, and then color coding those according to their allocation type. Uh, so all of these here using the different APIs, um, the export APIs, the block exports, and then uh, kind of the idea I wanna work with with the policies to quickly give you access into the allowed block types and device types, information templates, and so forth, and even down into the user-defined fields. And I felt that you know, really from um, an entry level, just, you know, looking at this as it is right now, it's kind of a, a browser, if you will, to look at the different address space and the containers and device containers and logical. So it works pretty good for this, but I do need to add in some different, you know, functionality to add, delete, modify. And I think I'll do that um, as I move forward. And then also include some DNS domain, you know, extracts and exports and, and things that we can map back to the clients here. So now to do all of that, I figured I would show you some of the code behind the tree view since this is relatively new. And uh, I use this with our container structure because our containers are hierarchical in nature. They have a concept of a root node, um, and then it has a parent, which is a child of the root, which also becomes the parent of the child, and so on and so forth down the list. So effectively what I've done using the PowerShell Studio is set it up on the click for the buttons to go ahead and set the begin update and to clear the nodes. And then I'm gonna add the root node, which I'm gonna to default to in control. You know, I just wanna do that for now, but I may take this and read it in if the files are uh, fully intact and show the root structure. The root node is by default the first node in all of the tree view. So I'm gonna set that to zero. And then using my IP control uh, module that I wrote for PowerShell, I'm calling my export IP control container, passing in the executive, which is the drop-down combo box in the text field for the user. And then I'm sorting these on their parent name. So I am getting a proper sort of all of this based on their textual sort. Now, once I get the container list, I'm then gonna work through the containers uh, for, uh, for each, and then I'm gonna grab the container name, the parent name, and the container type. So these three attributes here, we're then gonna further use to determine what the different parent levels are. And to kind of explain that a little bit, in IP control, if I highlight this, I set this up as a tooltip. This is the full path, which is the in control global. If you kind of walk down through this, it shows you the full path of the container. And they are slash denoted or slash delimited. And what I can then do then is take that container and split it, which I did into an array. And I have to backslash this to escape the slash character. Then I'm walking through each of the container parts, you know, starting with the, the root to the child parent, child parent, child parent. And then it's evaluating each of those and looking for using a find, 
within the tree view in the nodes, that particular container name and to tell it to do it recursively through the whole tree, through children. And what I expect to do here is if I find this node, tree node in the list already, or if there's no, uh, it's equal to zero, then I'm gonna go ahead and add, meaning I haven't found this node, it's not in the tree view already. So I'm gonna go ahead and add it and then determine if it's logical or device. I'm then setting the tooltip to be the current container plus the slash and current container or current parent and container. And then I'm doing the same thing uh, down here below with a device type and I'm changing the icon to represent two different types of icons in that node add. So the second part of this is, which is kind of you know important and capable in the tree view, is that you can uh, set a tag to an object. And so what I'm doing is I go through each of these containers in the for each loop, I'm grabbing the container and I'm tagging it or adding it to the tag of the node itself. So what I'm doing with that then, um, each one of these containers then has that full container uh, node with all of its attributes. And then I can simply say show container policies. And then what I do in this function is I'm going out and grabbing the tag off the selected node and I'm just parsing through it to pull out the different array elements. And that's, that's effectively what that does. So the first part of this is, is we're doing kind of an inner loop, checking for all of these attributes. So if it's not in the array, checking the, the structure is gonna build those for us. Lastly, is we have the add of the actual node itself. And so what we do here is we set the parent from the tree viewed nodes, we're gonna set the parent to find the last element minus one. So the last element we know in the full path is going to be the including the container that we're working on currently, but the new parent, we want to be one less of the end, which is effectively the last element. So here we then again test the logical device container. We set the same function up as we did here uh, because this actually just goes out and builds the parent tree structure. This builds the actual node that we're working on. And very lastly in this, I do a tree view sort and then I end the update, which then refreshes the update on the screen. So that turned out to be you know, very easy to do, very short number of code and lines. And to kind of quote someone I had read when I was looking some of this up, you know, once you figure out what this is doing and, and how to manipulate the parent and the child knows, this becomes a very easy process to work through. So uh, in that part of it too, now I ran into some issues when I did the exports of the IPs and the blocks that IP control wants to export these based on their object ID meaning whenever they were inserted and whatever that object is. So what I would have then, whenever I would do like an export of the devices or the containers, is I started to have addresses that were in their device ID equivalent and not in their IP sorted range. So a couple of things that might help you along the way if you're dealing with IP addresses, especially in PowerShell, um, I did find a couple links out there for one that gave me a good conversion utility for converting the IP to a decimal. You basically pass it in as an IP address. It gets the bytes and it basically gets the byte address, uh, address bytes, and it then converts it. So it reverses it and converts it to an integer, which provides us the uh, IP decimal, which we can then use as a sort. So I've added the IP integer or IP decimal to each of these uh, list view, virtual list views, so that I can actually sort, and this is the IP definition. Um, so this gives me a great sortability, and so I use that to convert. So there's one to convert the IP to a decimal, and I felt that to convert it back from a decimal was as easy, getting the bytes again, reversing it, and joining it with a dot, which I did in a couple of steps. So if you're, um, again, work with IP addresses and you need the ability to convert the IP string to its decimal and then back, uh, these two functions here would work well for you and should do what we, uh, we need. And I also have an Excel spreadsheet function that does that if you look at my videos, if you haven't seen that yet. So that's um, you know, where I'm at now. And then I'm gonna have to add in a bunch of functionality, I believe, to make this kind of a useful browser and um, you know, effectively have some abilities to do some ads or some searching and, and some other capabilities. So thanks for bearing with me. Hope this is short enough, but I hope you learned something with the, the tree view. And if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Thanks, see you in the next video.